Howdy, BookTube. Uh, today, I'm finally getting on with the library tour. Uh, so this should be episode or volume 9. And we are now at the red mystery shelf. And uh, there is quite a bit packed into here. And, and this isn't even all the mysteries that I have. I have even more out in the front room, especially of some vintage crime black lizard publications and hard case crime. So we're gonna go through this shelf first. Um, this very top one is probably gonna be last because these like to fall very easily. But this first one is gonna be predominantly hard case crime. And I think predominantly hard case crime I haven't read. Um, I have a ton that I have, but again, that's also out in the front room. So just thought I would preface that really quickly. And let's get going on to the transverse books. So I'm just gonna pull some of these down here so it'll be a little easier for us to see them. And the first three are Dick Tracy books. So I have, and these are the Max Allen Collins one. So this is uh, Dick Tracy. And the subtitle here, A Town This Tough Needs a Cop This Tough. Yeah, and this is the novel by Max Allen Collins, based on the screenplay by Jim Cash and Jack Epps Jr. and Bo Goldman and Warren B. And this uh, is now <laughs> a major motion picture from Walt Disney Pictures. So this is the Dick Tracy. And then we have uh, Dick Tracy Goes to War. Sorry for the glare. I'll see if I can do something about that here in a second. Yeah, the fate of the world rests with one man. <laughs> yeah, Dick Tracy joins up to save the world from Nazis, crooks, and con men. <laughs> and then here we have the secret files of Dick Tracy. And this, oddly enough, I found at a sci-fi bookstore. <laughs> uh, my friend Matt came up here to visit, I think two years ago. And there was a sci-fi bookstore up here. And we went down there and, you know, sci-fi is not my biggest uh, genre that I'm into, but it's his big one. So we were just milling around for like two hours and I found this. I was like, well, I found something to buy in here. <laughs> so those are the three Dick Tracy books. And now getting on to Hard Case Crime, which will be the remainder of this shelf. Uh, this is Dominic Stransbury's The Confession. Was he an innocent man or a deprived killer? Ooh. <laughs> and I miss the signs that Hard Case Crime used to put out. The, like, actual um, kind of mass market size. They just do kind of the trade paperback now. But, oh well, all good things must pass. Uh, this one is Stephen King's The Colorado Kid, which she learned the dead man's secret. Yeah. I, I remember the first hard case crime I ever got was um, Joyland by Stephen King, which we're going to see here in a few minutes. Uh, this one is Lawrence Block's A Walk Among the Tombstones. Um, I hate that it is a movie tie-in. Like, uh, I'm low-key heated. But it's, I believe this is part of the, the Matthew Scudder books, which I want to get all of them so I can read them all in order. Um, somebody was telling me it's definitely not one to just pick randomly. It's a, it's a series that should be read chronologically. This one is 50 to 1 by Charles Ardai, um, who I believe is like the editor of Hard Case Crime. And what's cool about this, this was like, uh, to celebrate their 50th or 50 books that they had printed. And so each chapter in here pays a little homage to each publication that they put out. And you can even see the hard case crime books on the table here. So yeah, the girl with the long green heart. Um, there's the Colorado kid. Yeah, you can see quite a few on here. So I think that's really neat. Um, I think I remember talking about this and somebody said it wasn't good, which that sucks. Um, 
I'm still going to check it out to see for myself, but man, <laughs> what a great way to start. Uh, this is Nightwalker by David Hamilton. Uh, the cover definitely is like really cornball, but I figured why not. Yeah, they were on the run from a dead man. <laughs> and then uh, this is The First Quarry by Max Allen Collins. Now, I read the original Quarry series uh, last year or the year before, and that was awesome. I've been really slow going, though, with the prequels that Max Allen Collins put out, and he's putting out even more. And... I think because of that, it's it's hard for me to remember the order of them. So I have like a few scattered prequel quarries, but I don't have them all yet. So I think going into the next year, that's what I'm going to try to get uh, all situated so I can read those. So I'm going to set these here. So now we're into the shelf. So, and this is one I saw Mark at Richardson Reads recently get. Um, this is one on my to read list for next year. This is, uh, the 20 year death by Ariel S. Winter. And this is cool. It's like three novels in one that go through 20 years. So 1931, the body found in the gutter in France led the police inspector to the dead man's beautiful daughter and to her hot, hem uh, hot tempered American husband. 1941, a hard-boiled private eye hired to keep a movie studio's leading lady happy uncovers the truth behind the brutal slaying of a Hollywood starlet. In 1951, a desperate man pursuing his last chance at redemption finds himself with blood on his hands and the police on his trail. So I think this is kind of like a cool concept. So yeah, that is the 20-year death. I probably won't go through every single plot line through here because... My first eight videos were pretty long for my liking, so we're going to try and just blaze through these titles, and if we want to talk more about them, ask me away in the comments. I'd be more than happy to tell you more about this. So, now we have Lawrence Blocks, the girl with the deep blue eyes, which admittedly I've started twice and I couldn't get very far into, so I think third time might be the charm with this. And I've really grown to like... Lawrence Block. We had a rough start in the beginning, but I think I think I'll get it to work this time. But I'm gonna put this back here. So apologies for the weird technicalities. Okay. So now, yep, this is the first one I got. This is Joyland uh, by Stephen King. I think I I think I can't remember if I read this all the way through or not. Um, but I like this. I like this a lot, and I believe that this actually is not my copy, but Matt's mom gave me this, because she's a serious reader, and she really enjoyed this and so lent it to me, so kudos to her on that one. Um, next up here, don't start falling on me, uh, is Quarry's Choice. Uh, I, again, and because this is like the prequel, I don't know which order this one is, but I, I love the Quarry books. I'm very excited to get to these prequels. Now this, this, um, kind of aggravated me because I got this, I think at a thrift store. Oh no, no, it was, uh, it was at Powell's. Okay. <laughs> and they accidentally put uh, an advanced review copy out and I didn't even notice it because when I'm in Powell's, I, I got tunnel vision. I can't see him on the move in there. But this is Mickey Spillane's The Last Stand, and I believe that this was his last novel, too. Um, yeah, the final completed novel by Mickey Spillane, with an introduction by Max Allen Collins. So, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of annoyed that it's an ARC book. Um, but, I don't know, maybe it'll still be all right. I'll, I might look for one that's the finished copy. Um, <clears throat> let's see. This is becoming difficult. Um, <laughs> uh, this one I actually started two years ago during this time, Christmas time. And uh, I got like three, four through and it got really convoluted. But I think I figured the whodunit. So I think I'll revisit this. 
Uh, this is Daniel Boyd's Easy Death. And uh, it's pretty much about a robbery, robbing uh, an armored car in the snow. And it's Christmas and they got Christmas music on and stuff. But, um, I mean, it was pretty cool. It's just it got really kind of cloudy uh, near the end. And that's why I stopped right there. But uh, it was fun. Here we go. Okay. So, this is another series I really want to get into. The Cool and Lamb series. Written by Earl Stanley Gardner, who's most well known for his Perry Mason books. And this one is Turn On the Heat. Subtitle... Nothing burns hotter than an old flame. And um, I've seen a lot of really good reviews for like the Cool and Lamb books. Um, and I have quite a few of them too. I think I have three. Let me just grab the other two. So the other two that I have, um, this one recently came out. This is The Count of Nine. And I love that color. I love anything that's super vivid. And then uh, <laughs> this one is The Knife Slipped. And this was a lost Cool and Lamb mystery. Um, were they all lost? Yeah, first publication in 50 years for the Count of Nine. First publication anywhere. Yeah, so. And I've seen the AA Fair books, uh, <laughs> like the actual original paperbacks, and those are fun to find. Uh, Sometimes they're not cheap either, but still, <laughs> but still they're fun. And uh, now we got another quarry book. This one is Quarry in the Black. I like this very like 70s feeling. Um, yeah, where does a hitman draw the line? I'm, I would be intrigued to see where. And this one is here. Joseph Koning's uh, False Negative. I love the cover art for this one, too. Um, first publication anywhere. Sorry again for the, this annoying glare. And this one I've seen around quite a bit, too. This one is Understudy for Death by Charles Wilford. And um, let's see. First publication in nearly 60 years. And Elmore Warren Leonard gave the author a really good review. An Unforgivable Crime and an unforgettable novel. Um, I've seen mixed reviews, though, for this, like on Goodreads, I believe, but I still want to check it out. Oh, this one. Now, this is an author I really, really like. <laughs> um, I've read a, quite a few of his books now, but this um, was supposed to, be, supposed to be a James Bond movie, uh, but it, like, never took off. Uh, this is Donald E. Westlake's Forever and a Death, and I love this cover, and it's a big one, too. It, this one and, like, the 20-year death are, like, the biggest ones I have. And, yeah, the bond that never was. A fortune in stolen gold, a device that will kill millions, and just one man can stop it. It's always one guy, right? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, Forever and a Death. Uh, I think that came out last year. Or maybe even earlier in the year. I can't remember. Um, oh, yes. I remember seeing this at Barnes and just having to have it. The Lost Pulp Novel by Gore of it all. Thieves fall out. On the eve of revolution, Egypt is a tinderbox. Will one American light the spark that sets it ablaze? Um, part of me is afraid that this is like going to be hella orientalist. But I will keep my fingers crossed that it won't. So... <laughs> uh, this is one that I actually DNF'd. And I think it was because I just wasn't in the mood for it. Um, because I love Ed McBain. I really do. And so I was shocked I didn't like it. But I think this is also his, his first novel. Uh, this is So Nude, So Dead. And, uh, I mean, it's unfortunate that the protagonist is addicted to drugs and, like, his drug addiction just makes it impossible for him to do anything else in this novel. And it's just very hard to read. Uh, is it realistic? Though His, like, line of thinking and, and constantly worrying about, like, the next fix. Yes, that's very real. But, God, it makes it so hard to get the plot moving. 
So I, I think I'll give this another shot. Um, yeah, we got another Max Allen Collins. So this is Seduction of the Innocent. Um, and I like that it kind of looks like a comic book with this like red header. Um, yeah, comic books are corrupting America's youth. And I love anything with that theme. Um, <laughs> instantly, that's what drew me in. So that is uh, Seduction of the Innocent. And then uh, one of the two James M. Cain books I haven't read yet, uh, The Cocktail Waitress. The other one I have is Mildred Pierce. So I got to get to these. But I love uh, the the Lucky Strike there and the ashtray, all that. I just love the art for these. And, uh, you know, maybe I'm shallow, but sometimes the cover does tie you into a book or makes you want to go away from it. And this drew me in really quickly. Um, this one is different. Uh, this one is The Secret Lives of Married Women. And this, I believe, takes place where I live in the Portland metro area. And so I was like, oh, you know, that's different. You don't usually see a lot of these kind of like um, noirs or whatever. But, you know, I could be wrong, but that's what I thought I remember associating with this book. But yeah, <laughs> we'll see how this one goes. And now we get back to the um, the mass market sizes that I really enjoy. So another Cool and Lamb. This is Top of the Heap, Earl Stanley Garner. This one I see everywhere, um, especially in used bookstores. And it's hard having this many hard case crimes and looking for them in used bookstores because nine times out of ten I already have it. And it's like, oh, well, this would be fun if I didn't own it, you know. <laughs> and this book, Matt was actually just asking me about. He sent me a text the other night. He's like, hey... Uh, what's the name of that Watergate plumber guy and what was that book of his that you had and this is E. Howard Hunt's house stick. E. Howard Hunt was part of the whole Watergate scandal. It's a big deal. Um, <laughs> I'm, like you haven't heard of Watergate right but yeah so this is one I want to get to. Um, this one's cool how the cover is set up. It's this way. This is Losers Live Longer by Russell Atwood. So, yeah, some of these copies I have are, like, rough. Because I bought them for dirt cheap. I barely cared about the condition they were in. Uh, now I'm a real stickler, but it's alright. I don't care. Uh, this one is by Richard Powell. It says, Say It With Bullets. And, yeah, see, they got the stickers everywhere. <laughs> And this one I had started, but had put down. It felt very um, anticlimactic, like I had no inertia at all. But I'll give it one more go. And this is Mickey Spillane's Dead Street. It's almost like it picked up too fast, which is like something I rarely ever complain about with this type of genre. But it, you felt like nothing for this main character. You felt nothing for his circumstances because there wasn't really any like build up to it at all it was just like and this is happening but still dead street let's see we got madison smart bills straight cut so this one is the peddler by richard s prather he sold their bodies and his soul yikes <laughs> so yeah his women offered paradise for a price so yeah. See, I haven't looked at these in a while because I've been reading so much nonfiction. It's like I'm, I'm rediscovering them with you. This one I've heard so many good things about. So many. And it's a series, I think. But this is Krista Faust's Money Shot. And I'll just read you the back because it sounds absolutely enticing. They thought she'd be easy. They thought wrong. It all began with a phone call asking former porn star Angel Dare to do one more movie. Before she knew it, she'd been shot and left for dead in the trunk of a car. But Angel is a survivor. And that means she'll get to the bottom of what's been done to her, even if she has to leave a trail of bodies along the way. So, boom. Uh, <laughs> very excited about that. Uh... Anytime I see Donald E. Westlake, I just know there's going to be like a tinge of humor that's going to make this even more fun. 
This is his work, Somebody Owes Me Money. <laughs> I read his one book um, that was also published through Hard Case Crime, uh, Help, I'm Being Held Prisoner, and that was hilarious. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm stoked for that. And now a complete vibe shift. Um, we got Cornell Woolrich's Fright. And I've heard a lot of good stuff about his work just in general. So um, I really want to get to him. And just two more here. I'll pull these out. So this is uh, Grave Descend by John Lang. Now this was it wouldn't be like uh, one that would really be my interest. But uh, Erica had gotten this for me. So I figured, well, I will definitely give it a try. It's hard case crime. And um, I mean, if it's not great, it's not great. But it, it has the potential to be awesome. So that is uh, Grave Descend. And the last one here is David Dodge's The Last Match. And this is like an international thriller. It's a guy, it's like a, it was a, a game of cat and mouse on an international scale. So I think that would be really fun. Okay, folks. So there you have it. That is the first shelf of the mystery bookcase. And we just went through uh, quite a bit of Hard Case Crime. So I hope you all enjoyed that. I'm going to get moving on to the next shelf. And I'll catch you guys there. Peace.